Hello everyone and welcome, it's Federico. Today I will be talking to you about this paper, Spectral Norm Regularization from Proving the Generalizability of Deep Learning by Yuichi Yoshida and Takeru Miyato. Uh, this is a 2018 ICLR paper, I believe, and uh, it in fact investigates this uh, idea of, uh, of lowering the spectral norm of the weight matrices in an attempt to, to lower, uh, to increase generalizability of, of these models. So we investigate generalizability of deep learning based on the sensitive sensitivity to input perturbation. Uh, we hypothesize that high sensitivity to perturbation degrades performance on the data. Um, so to do it, we we introduce this method of spectral norm regularization, which uh, penalizes the high spectral norm of the weight matrices. Okay, cool. So sounds pretty good. Let's uh, look at maybe at the related work section. So a conventional method of understanding Generalizability of a trained model is uh, is looking at the flatness and sharpness of the local minima. So we have a flat uh, minima if its loss value is quite stable, I guess, when it is perturbed. Otherwise, it's a sharp one. Um, so uh, the idea is that um, the high sensitivity of training function a sharp local minimizer negatively affects the generalizability. Uh, and then if we look at this minimum description length theory. Uh, we it says that uh, models which require fewer bits fewer bits to describe generalize better. So just to go over it, uh, if we have a, a loss surface which looks something like this, um, the idea is that um, okay, sorry, let me draw this better. Uh, even though this is like slightly higher loss, it might be worth for us to to land here instead of here because the idea is that um, if we land here it might be that it's just like a very lucky kind of we got lucky with the parameters and just happened to overfit in a way to the data while here uh, it's much more stable so you know there's a lot more parameters so it might be that actually this is a better generalization of, of the data so that's the idea of what they're saying with that paragraph um, so it is known that SGD with large mini batch uh, leads to a non-generalizing model, and one that doesn't generalize well. Um, and it's in this paper it's studied uh, based on the flatness and sharpness of these minima. Um, and um, they they formulated a flat local minima as a local minima, which eigenvalues of the Hessian are small. Um, so yeah, the notion of um, Flat sharp local minima consi considers the sensitivity of loss function against the perturbation of model parameters. However, it's natural to consider sensitivity of loss function against the perturbation of data. Uh, and this is what they do in this paper, right? Uh, this is the idea. Um, yeah, so, and so on and so on. Um, and this paragraph is actually quite interesting. Uh, singular values have attracted attention the concept of training uh, n recurrent neural networks. And it is shown that restricting the weight ma matrices in R RNN to be unitary or orthogonal, that is when matrices with uh, singular values equal to one, uh, this helps with the problem of exploding gradients. Um, so uh, just to go over some uh, context, uh, if we have a matrix, um, <laughs> come on, <laughs> if we have a matrix uh, A acting on a vector, and then we look at uh, let me just if we look at this equation, right? Where um, so pretty much what we're saying with this equation is we want to find the lambdas and x's such that this is true, meaning that uh, lambda being a scalar, right? Um, so we want to find pretty much vectors for which lambda just acts as a scaling factor, or for which a acts just as a scaling factor. So if we have uh, let's say we have a uh, regular you know space what a does is um, is it kind of morphs it right but it's possible that some sometimes a if it's if it has some properties uh, it will um, to some vectors it will just act as in like let's say this is the vector then a will just keep it in the same direction but maybe scale it by some factor right and and the factor by which you're scaling is this lambda called the eigenvalue now uh, if we mm, um, what we can do then is we get the set of eigenvalues, we take the non-zero eigenvalues and we square root them and these are called singular values, so they're kind of scaled eigenvalues. 
and then what we do is um actually we, we do it for this uh their square root also because we we look at this value here right uh and we take the eigenvalues of this uh so the um, a transpose by a uh, we look at the eigenvalues of this result and then we we take the singular value and now the largest singular value is um is known as of this of this multiplication is known as the spectral norm of the matrix which is this um this quantity here uh, uh, this quantity here uh the spectral norm uh of this matrix a m by n is defined uh, as this which corresponds to the largest singular value a okay um and this is how you compute this largest singular value i guess and like obviously like we i'm gonna go through the algorithm but you get the point right um so you take uh, this uh, multiplication and then you take the square root of the larger eigenvalue okay um okay so this is the idea the idea and the intuition is that uh, this the largest if a singular value is large for a matrix uh, let's say a has a larger singular value than b the matrix b then the idea is the intuition is that a stretches space a bit more than b uh, proportional to the to the spectral norm of it so if we can keep the spectral norm low then we can uh, kind of uh, lower these perturbations and then we can go a bit in detail here so a feed for neural network can be represented as cascading computations uh, which we are all quite familiar with um, so here they take like a the affine transformation um, and then we we put it through f which is an activation function here um, okay and uh, and so on so here they're just defining some stuff like theta which is quite important is the parameters and uh, f theta um, is a function from n0 to nl so it's uh, it's like the class of the the final network right uh, and then we look at the loss function uh, here and then yeah so okay pretty standard stuff um, so here they say let us consider how we can obtain a model that is insensitive to the perturbation of the input so they want to obtain a model theta such that the L2 norm of this quantity is small. Um, and, and then this is obviously, this should remind you of something we've done before, right? Where we look at uh, this value um, f of x plus delta uh, minus f of x. And we look at some norm. Uh, this obviously is very uh, similar to what we were doing with the Lipschitz continuity paper okay so this should tie in nicely um so the idea is that x is uh in n0 and then uh, we have an arbitrary vector wi which is small right because these perturbations the idea is that they're small and they cr even though they're small they create a large uh, kind of explosion in the in the function so so a key observation is that um, most practically used neural networks ex exhibit non-linearity only because they use piecewise linear functions at activation like red loop, max out and max pooling, which I guess are not used so much, but red loop is quite used, uh, even leaky red loop. Um, so, <coughs> sorry, uh, in such a case, we can, um, uh, so f, f of theta is piecewise linear function, right? Because, uh, because, um, affine transformations are linear uh, and then uh, I guess affine, well, affine transformations are affine and uh, and if we compose them with piecewise linear functions then we get piecewise linear functions so if we consider a small neighborhood what we can do is we can kind of consider that it's a linear linear function um, and what we can do is we can represent it by an affine map um, and, uh, and yeah so we can rewrite this um, this uh, equation here uh, as this because all they're doing here is uh, is saying oh uh, I mean if we have like uh, something which looks nonlinear but then if we like zoom in here then like imagine like, this the magnifying lens <laughs> this uh, will just be like a linear right <laughs> I should never do. so imagine like a magnifying lens here this will just look like it's linear okay 
So if we look at a very small neighborhood, then it will be a linear function. And then what we can do is we can rewrite linear functions uh, in like matrix notation. Well, they're saying like it's an affine mapping, I guess, because it's not strictly linear, but yeah. Um, and then what we can do is um, we can rewrite this obviously uh, in terms of this uh, f becomes this affine function. Uh, and then this simplifies down to this. But hold on, uh, this value is very similar to this, right? In fact, the only difference is that this has a maximization term. So what we can do is uh, we can say that this is actually bounded by the max of, uh, of this, right? Because uh, what, what we're assuming is that um, bounded above or could be equal to, because uh, obviously this, these two values are the same, just that one is taking the maximum possible value of this. So we can obviously bound it above by this. Um, so uh, hence the function f theta is insensitive to the perturbation if the spectrum uh, norm is small. Because uh, just by analyzing this, if this is small, um, it's obviously bounded by bounding by above the other quantity, so this uh, the effect of this initial um, perturbation has to be small. Um, yeah. So this is their pretty simple argument, which which just stands for the fact that uh, we're looking at um, at a neighborhood which is linearized, right? Um, the argument above suggests that model parameter theta should be trained such as spectrum norm is small. Uh, so to further investigate this, let us assume that uh, each activation function is an element wise ReLU. Um, and then this can be easily generalized. Note that for a given vector, uh, FL, which is the um, activation function at a specific layer, acts as a diagonal matrix where an element is in the diagonal is equal to one if the corresponding element is positive, otherwise it equals to zero. So what they're saying is ReLU can actually be kind of a conditional um, so let's say what we can do is uh, ReLU is uh, if uh, um, if x is uh, bigger than zero, uh, then our matrix DL is equal to the identity matrix, else uh, DL is equal to the zero matrix. Or not the zero, let's put it in bold. Whoops, the zero bold. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so this is what they're saying. It's like, it's kind of a switch, right? And uh, and then what this means is we can rewrite this uh, composition of weights uh, and activation functions as, as this, right? Where we um, we look at the weight times this activation function, ReLU, and, and so on, right? Um, and then note that um, this value is always bounded above by one uh, because uh, this DL is either diagonal or zero. Um, so we have that the spectral norm is bounded above by one. Um, so what we get is that if we look at this, uh, at this, um, at the spectral norm for the entire kind of composition, um, we can uh, just divide it up and then it's bounded above by this value because these are either, these are zero or these are under one, right? So this multiplication can only decrease this um, so we can bound it above by this. Um, so what, what the, they're trying to say is pretty much uh, what we can do is uh, if we want to bound this, it is sufficient to bound this <laughs> um, just by this simple argument. And then this is exactly what they do. And, and then this is pretty much what they're doing is uh, here we have a regular like loss term and then here we have a regular riser term where they are minimizing this uh, from this argument here, right? So yeah, it's it's quite straightforward. And here they talk about how to compute the gradients and stuff like that. They give an algorithm um, to do it, which you can read in your own time. I guess it's this video is becoming a bit long as it is. Uh, and then they also show other other regularization techniques, like uh, you know we can uh, uh, regularize. Uh, the Frobenius norm of the matrix, we can do adversarial training, we can do Jacobian regularization and so on. Um, so this is pretty much the meat of the, of the argument, which is quite a simple one, um, but in my opinion, quite a neat one. 
Um, it, it obviously kind of all depends on, uh, on these activation functions being piecewise linear. I'm not sure this will work if the regularization function is not piecewise linear, but maybe someone in the comments has a better idea of this. Uh, it would be interesting to know. Um, but I think that's a pretty big uh, assumption. But I mean, piecewise linear functions are quite used as activation functions nowadays. And, and then what we see is that, um, is that if we actually go ahead and do this, if we look at the test accuracy for VGG net and IN, a dense net and dense net uh, on two different data sets, we can see that this is uh, working quite well. Um, it's uh, beating uh, the vanilla decay, I'm not sure uh, what it is, uh, adversarial, sp but spectral kind of seems to always uh, land on top, which is, which is quite, uh, quite nice because this is quite a simple a simple idea, quite a simple concept, but uh, seems to be working quite nicely. Um, and then we can look at this uh, graph uh, the accuracy over epoch. Um, maybe I can zoom in. Oops. Zoom in. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, you can see that, uh, let's see, spectral, um, yes, seems to be like the accuracy is growing quite nicely. Um, I think, for what model is this? For dense net on C400. Okay, so this was the one where it didn't do as well as the other ones. Uh, so the solid dash and dotted lines indicate the test accuracy, training accuracy, and generalization gap. Okay, um, so it's going in line. Uh, there seems to be some jumps, but I, th I think all of them are seeing some jumps. But in general, it behaves quite well. So, um, um, what I was mostly interested is in, in the idea behind it, because um, because the m also by si since we are uh, um, looking at this scenario, which is quite similar uh, to to adversarial samples, uh, what this means is that this probably also has an effect on uh, on uh, on adversarial defenses, and I'm not sure this paper discusses it. I don't think so. But um, I think that's all. That could be also a potential uh, outlook in this paper that this uh, looks at. Uh, it's another new kind of adversarial defense. So just look at the conclusion. In this work we hypothesize that high sensitivity to perturbation of input data degrades the performance. Uh, in order to reduce the sensitivity, uh, we propose a spectral norm organization and confirm that exhibits a better generalizability than other baseline methods for through experiments. Um, Experimental comparison with other methods indicated that insensitivity to perturbation of test data plays a crucial role in determining the generalizability, wh which is a very important takeaway. Um, there are f several future directions. It's known that weight decay can be seen as a regularization and map estimation derived from gra Gaussian prior to model parameters. Is it possible to understand spectral norm regularization as a derivation of prior and so on? Uh, we also need a theoretical understanding of the effect of spectral norm organization on generalization. Um, yeah. So, again, cool paper. There's some other plots and stuff, which I'm sure you can have a look into. My main, I, my main goal with this video was to look at more of the mathematics behind it because I found it quite nice the way they um, assumed the piecewise linearity of neural networks and so on. It was quite uh, straightforward, concise, and I think it gave quite good motiv motivation for their method. Okay, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.